Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul. And today I finally got to planting all these trees that um, I had to take from a client's backyard. Uh, she used to live in a lake house and had a nice clean uh, yard right down to the lake. And she just recently bought a new home and there was a really rough like um, wooded area between her yard and this river behind her house. So I believe she wanted to replicate you know what she had at the lake house and so even though it's not what i would do um she had me remove any tree under three inches in diameter because the association would allow only for that anything above three inches you got to get like a permit or something like that so with that being said i got a bunch of hemlock white pine and one oak tree i'm going to show you that in a little bit i got those uh planted out uh, near the tree farm, uh, some actually in the tree farm. Uh, but uh, earlier in the day when it was raining, Laura and I got to doing some well overdue organizing. So like um, back here, this was just an absolute mess. It was kind of like it accumulated every time something died or whatever, and it was just like piling up, driving me crazy and I'd been putting it off. So got that taken care of. Um, and then this bonsai bench, I don't know if you could tell, but it's drooping down in the middle. It's an old piece from Ikea, um, but it serves its purpose. You know, it has my tools underneath and I think it has a nice little uh, display quality with the white. So I had to move my Bobabs, which were right in the middle, um, front and center, because they're my favorite. Um, I had to move them out to the side. So I moved the two heavier ones to the outside. That's a couple of lemon scented gum. Got the blue jacaranda down the middle, another blue jack right to its left. My um, arching style fig, where you actually take the branches and arch them back into the soil, which uh, Broski told me that is bad for the tree and it won't last more than eight to 10 years if I do that. So next time I repot it, that is not gonna be arching style anymore. And then we have Norfolk pine, Norfolk uh, island pine, excuse me, and a Canary Island date palm. That's from seed. So, uh, yep, cleaned all that up, reorganized that. And then Laura, I'm still in a little bit of organizing process. Laura has been in a refurbishing furniture type of a mood. In a previous video, I think I showed you, she, um, she redid an armoire I found on the side of the road that was nice. Well, I found a little shelving unit that was made of high quality wood. And it was like a basic white with like kids crayon all over it. And I said, don't do whatever you want with it. You know, I find it and do it. And she made it awesome. She did like this antique finish with blue and um, some sanding technique. I don't know. And then she finished it with this nice uh, oil finish. So um, she really wanted it to be a piece where I could showcase my favorite bonsais. And so I wanted to make it really clean looking. So left to right. Got up here, my um, Bobab specimen. And then we got this when we got married. So Laura has crazy hair, so I did a little spider plant in there. And then a cutting from a bunny tree for me because I'm all about making the money and not spending the money. It's like, it's an issue. <laughs> so, anyways, um, here is it's my jade plant. And it's actually getting pretty nice. See, it's getting nice and woody. The trunk, it's a few years old now. So I'm pleased with that. And then this is my mame shelf. So this is a succulent that I don't know the name of, but these were originally cuttings and they've all taken and it's it's working with the the smaller root base they are keeping a tiny leaf because they actually they kick off you know succulents it's not like a leaf it's almost like an aloe thing um, they kick off longer nodes um, on the full-size plant there's my grand kitty bean and me it took a while <laughs> to get that pose she was batting me in the face <laughs> so here is a pinus strobus on the right and that is um that's from seed. And in the back, that is a Rose of Sharon cutting. And then right here, of course,
course you're not going to focus. Why would you focus? Focus. Oh my gosh. Other angle. Oh, whatever. Okay, it's a tiny little nub of a cactus that I grew from seed from the Sedona Forest in um, Arizona. Here we have pineapple guava. I feel like because the lighting's behind it, this is all gonna come out a little bit blurry, but y'all get the picture. So here is a little, um, it's some sort of citrus grown from seed. It was in this big old thing where I put cuttings and seeds and whatever grows, grows. And I just transplanted that today. That's in pumice and perlite. Down here we have another pineapple guava. And lastly we have Franny's Jade. And last time we pretty much hacked everything off when we were trying to get that baby to develop down there. And it looks like it has. So that one and that one, they're coming up on their annual pruning. All right, so as you see, I got inside organized, uh, and then Laura and I got hard at work outside, but it was still kind of wet and rainy, and I didn't feel like putting a shirt on, and she didn't feel like getting out of her pajamas, so we're like, you know what, we just won't film the work that we did out there, and uh, so we took it easy as, as it is Sunday, and uh, you know, she weeded an entire 500 tree, <laughs> tree farm. Well, I transplanted all these trees, so that's taking it easy for us. Anyways, that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. So this is a third piece that she's actually working on. It's like a light blue. And then she kept the natural shelf wood. And then I think she said she's going to distress it with the palm sander so that it exposes some of that uh, lighter brown. So, I don't know. It sounds cool to me. Uh, too rainy and cold for paddle boarding. I'm a princess. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I, I raised all the canopies on my tomato plants. They're looking a little less sad. A few actually, you know, have a good amount of tomatoes. And... Um, my buddy works at a car dealership, and there was a slight tear in the American flag. So he said, Jared, we want to get, get rid of it, dispose of it properly with respect. So what would you recommend? And so I was like, shoot, bring it to me. I'm hanging that thing. So I have American flags all over the place. I understand, you know, when they rip, there's a proper way you're supposed to burn them and do that whole freaking process. But it's not made of cloth, so that would just be terrible and I think it looks really cool what's more patriotic than tomato plants and an American flag <laughs> all right so that's my raised tree bed doing all right here we go people so these ones I have kind of close together just for now um, a it puts it in a watering zone that had a little um, more time available because I have to split up how I water I water inside I water the deck of my fruit trees um, and then separately, I water this raised tree bed, fill the duck pond, and do my veggies. But since the bunnies have decimated two of my three uh, veggie beds, I have a little extra watering time in that slot. And then following that is the tree farm, broken into two different parts. Um, and then the second part includes uh, the Japanese tree garden. So when you have a well, you have to break it up throughout the day. So it's like, not only are you always watering, but you have to be conscious of how much you're watering at one time. So here we go, left to right, we've got these hemlocks. So that one's about eight feet tall, like four feet, six or seven, six or seven. Looking pretty cool. This oak, it had a really deep tap root and not many other roots, so I don't know that it's going to survive, but I'll give it a try. I haven't ha I've had terrible luck with um, Yamadorian oaks. And then these three, these are white pines. I know they're white pines because when you count the, uh, the nodes and the needles within them, there's five. So um, when they're red, there's three. They're attractive. 
And then I put the star of the show down here. These are my failed veggie and fruit beds. We're going to, we're going to do it again. The soil was too dense and the fence uh, holes were too large and bunnies slipped through and ate everything. So I'm going to lighten it up with perlite and some sand, I believe. And then we're going to give it a go again. So I originally had my um, weeping Norwegian spruces on the outside. And then on the inside, I, it's just been like, I've been trying to find what would be best. Originally I had um, a blue spruce that's over there, but the pot kept tipping because it had such a heavy canopy and the pot was tall and skinny. So I had to take that down. So anyways, I thought this white pine was just awesome. Just what a great natural start. It's already got so much nice branching. I love how it's slightly windswept. It almost has that little Charlie Brown Christmas tree effect. <laughs> so yeah, and then I was doing some tree work this week, talking about um, money. I'm always like, I do. I have my career, and then I'm like, any side gig possible. Anybody I know, they're like talking about getting something done. I'm like, oh, I could do that. Yeah, I would charge you this. <laughs> so um, we had a huge, huge hurricane here, and. Um, Anyways, this guy had so many trees down in his backyard, so we just knocked them all out, and this was cut absolutely perfectly. So I said, you know what, I'm taking that as a table. So there we go, boom, boom. I just threw a lavender plant up there for now, but I think that'll be cool. I love uh, lavender as an essential oil and the smell. So this is a Japanese tree garden, so obviously I want it to be relaxing. So having you know a plant like that was appealing. So this is that blue spruce I was talking about. It's in an ugly phase, so Laura and I decided we're going to grow it out for a couple of years. And, um, you know, I was trying to make it a weeping tree to match those, and all the new growth kept coming in and going upwards. So it ended up being all zigzaggy and terrible. And this guy's growing back very healthily. All right. A little chiminea. I've never used it, so I'm a poser. <laughs> As you see, the wildflowers have won the battle and are growing up through the tree farm, through my inches and inches of mulch. But I said, you know what? That's fine. Let them come out and flower. They'll be beautiful. And uh, we'll just remove the ones around the trees. So that's what we did. So you get rows like this of our spruce trees. Ten rows of 50. You can see the the shade that they are, it's different, you know? So Laura was doing the weeding here while I was planting those other trees. She did a pretty good job. I hate weeding. <laughs> Anytime I have weeding in, in a landscaping gig or something, I always will put a ad out on Craigslist or bring in some teenager to do it because I don't want to. <laughs> really what I enjoy about landscaping is not only making like like a property look very nice and sharp and clean but I love doing the ornamental pruning on all the trees and shrubs that could really set off a property when you see a property and they have like all those like shrubs that are just used uh, people use hedge clippers and they're just terrible shapes uh, I just ugh. so these, uh, they're doing well. Had them since the very beginning of March. All right, let's get over to the other couple of pines. So I held them up. I actually use these, um, it's rebar inside these candy canes. And that's what I line my driveway with so that uh, my plow guy doesn't rip up my lawn. So I put them down, down the driveway like it's uh, Santa's runway. Boom, white pine, that one's nice. These are just a little too tall for the one on the bench. So that one I won't let get any taller than, than it is right now. And then let's see if we got, here we go. I got three of these smaller hemlocks. Not much to them, but I just threw them in one of the sandbags from a failed white spruce. So there's three of them. I don't remember where I put the other two, so. Anyways. That's going to do it. I finally did it, Ian. <laughs> I told my buddy I was going to do this video like four or five days ago, but um, 
anyways if you if you don't have a lot of trees you don't realize how time consuming the watering is and i'm not complaining i'm just simply like stating like if you don't have time regularly to water and you're just getting into trees don't bite off more than you can chew because it's really a big part of it um so <sighs> so between training and therapy which is my career and then extra landscaping and moving jobs and tree work and then watering being a good husband and good father working out and you know making time for sleep I just I, I literally haven't had any bonsai time so I'm so thankful that I got to get into you know uh, the nooks and crannies of the house and get things straightened up and squared away because as a marine when things aren't squared away like I just can't relax and um, getting those trees planted it's a nice relief boom another job done hopefully they survive it's not the best time of year to do it but hey I would rather uh, try to get them to survive here than just toss them in the woods or a garbage pile you know so uh, they were going regardless maybe one of these days I'll actually show you the house that I'm talking about so that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai, y'all. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you're taking some time for yourself, getting yourself squared away. It feels good to be organized. It feels good to have some time off. And I am ready to go again uh, tomorrow, another hard work week. So uh, stay busy, stay happy, and grow bonsai, y'all. I'll talk to you soon. Jerry Paul out. Take care.